Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to continue our exploration into the Animal Kingdom, this time by examining the majestic creatures of flight in the world. Birds are a much larger part of One Piece than you may initially think, managing to thrive and survive on this planet that is primarily covered by water. So I dare say it's about time these majestic creatures got some focus. The criteria for this list is fairly simple. You have to be a bird, not a human with a bird type zoan fruit such as Pell, an actual bird. And for the sake of preventing argument, I also won't be counting Monet, because we have no idea what the hell she is. Or I guess was, because she's dead. Also, all the birds on this list must be canon. I don't want to be dealing with crap like random bird A from so and so movie, it's just easier this way. So with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top 5 birds in One Piece. Number 5. Miss Friday. Alright, we are kicking things off strong with one half of the unluckies from Baroque Works. In case there was any confusion, Miss Friday is this one, the Vulture. Not, not the Otter. And as one of the unluckies, Miss Friday is actually one of the most trusted agents of Sir Crocodile, who uses the pair of agents for a wide array of tasks, including reconnaissance and assassination. Now you might say those are some pretty complex ideas for a bird to handle, but Miss Friday is more than up to the task, complete with a pair of machine guns fixed to her avian back. Which makes a lot of sense given that Miss Friday and her otter ally are classified as type D creatures, small and savage. Now as a bird, and this is going to shock you, but Miss Friday's primary method of transportation is flight. And that's really cool because Miss Friday possesses the speed, stamina, and sheer navigational ability to traverse the Grand Line wherever required. Pretty damn impressive skills for a bird, and that is why Miss Friday finds herself here on this list. Number four, Hattori. Next up, we have the seemingly plain old pigeon who acts as a companion to Rob Lucci. Now, despite appearing as a mere pigeon, Hattori is actually incredibly intelligent and mimics a lot of human behavior, such as drinking from a glass. What a classy bird. But Hattori actually takes this a step further and is able to mimic his master to the point where Lucci is able to use him as a ventriloquist act. And as we can see, simply acting like Lucci isn't quite enough for Hattori as the pigeon also prefers to dress like him. Also rather interestingly, as Hattori has been with Lucci since childhood, that would make Hattori at least 25 four years old, which is absolutely stunning since the average lifespan of a pigeon is roughly 15 years. And it should also be said that exactly why Hattori prefers to spend most of his time with a heartless murderer is unknown. Perhaps Hattori is also a sociopath. And if so, that would make him the most evil bird on this list by quite a margin. But the most evil does not equal the best. Number three, Karu. Alright, here we have the only honorary straw hat on the top 5 best birds list, the leader of the super spot build duck squad, Karu. Like all birds thus far, Karu displays a level of intelligence on par with humans, and is able to communicate quite effectively, despite not being able to speak a human language. Very notably though, he appears to be able to read, which was demonstrated when he and Vivi were perusing a newspaper. I mean, I guess it is entirely possible that Karu was just looking at the pretty pictures, but we're going to give him a bit more credit than that. And while he is definitely a bird, Karu displays his quality is quite similar to that of other animals. For example, his loyalty is akin to that of a dog as he has been Princess Vivi's companion since she was a child, and he would go so far as to sacrifice his life for hers. And of course, Karu can also be ridden like a horse. And with that said, despite being a bird, Karu almost never engages in flight. So he really may as well be a flightless bird, kind of like an ostrich, a much more capable ostrich. Who can read? What a clever bird. Number two, the South Bird. Now this pick may be controversial for some, or not so much the pick itself, but how high the glorious South Bird has managed to find itself on this list. And to put this quite simply, it's because I really like the South Bird and this is my video, so here he is. These fantastic creatures are native to the island of Jaya in the paradise portion of the Grand Line. However, a much larger variant of them can be found on Skypea due to that portion of land being sent up into the sky via the knock-up stream. They are called South Birds due to their habit of always pointing their heads in a southerly direction. In fact, they seem to find it actually quite uncomfortable to face any other direction. Although Toei clearly forgot this fact when they animated this particular scene. But as a result of their quirk centuries ago, these birds were used as navigational tools to sail the Grand Line. And rather interestingly, North, East and West birds also exist. But we are focusing on the South bird here because they have personality. Specifically, they have really dickish personalities. In fact, South birds are quite sadistic and have been known to laugh at the misfortune of others. This coupled with their brilliant design certainly makes them worthy of their spot on this list in my opinion. However, there remains one bird in the world who simply cannot be ignored. Number one, Big News Morgans. 
Awards. At the pinnacle of today's list, we have the president of the World Economic Journal and all-around big bird impersonator, Big News Morgans. He is probably the most powerful bird in the world. Not in terms of strength, or who knows, maybe actually in terms of strength, which is minimal, just to be clear. But the true power of Big News Morgans comes in the form of the influence one garners from owning a globally distributed newspaper. Essentially, Morgans operates on an entirely different level to most birds and is even considered to be one of the emperors of the underworld. He is a sly, intelligent business bird with a keen eye for big news. As a result, Morgans can travel seamlessly between world factions, which was seen as he was invited to Big Mom's tea party, and then in the very next arc, he was also present at the Red Port to cover the royals arriving for the reverie. Sadly, despite being a bird, Morgans cannot fly. Luckily, he employs an army of news goos, which are adorably dressed seagulls, to deliver his propaganda, I mean, news to the world. Plus, he dresses like an absolute boss. I mean, just look at that style. How many other birds could pull off a top hat, cloak, and check pants. I'd like to see to be honest, but as of right now, Morgans is the only bird who has done it. So for that and many other arbitrary reasons, Big News Morgans shall be crowned the avian king on this list. And that pretty much does it for the top 5 birds in one piece. If you enjoyed this video then feel free to like, favourite or subscribe and if you are in any way keen on supporting this independent channel then please do check out my Patreon, Discord server or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. Finally, please do comment with your own favourite birds in the series. This has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.